I told you, this thing is bigger than Nino Brown, and I gotta listen. Order. If I'm going down, I'm taking court. a whole lot of people with me. Order in the court. Nino Brown Boxing, I'm back in the building. Shout out to the LDBC. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. So, man, I just want to get straight to the point. I want to talk about my man Gary Russell and basically what he did this past weekend. Um, I've seen multiple videos on the matter. I went to Leo Santa Cruz's Instagram page, went to his most recent photo, started scrolling to the comments section. You know, you got a lot of his fans speaking on it. You have a lot of uh, you have a lot of Gary Russell Jr. fans going to Leo Santa Cruz comment section on Instagram, and you know put their opinion in there as well. Um, seen videos from the brothers in the LDBC, and I saw their opinion. So basically, I mean a round of applause to Gary Russell Jr. Some people may feel like it was disrespectful. Some people feel like it's distasteful. All I can say is. Seemed like to me Gary Russell is just matching the energy that Leo Santa Cruz has been putting out for years. And some people may say, well, how? Like, what has Leo done? When you got, especially in the situation with Gary Russell Jr., some people could argue the whole political dynamic in boxing when it came to Guillermo Rigondeaux. But Gary Russell Jr. and Leo Santa Cruz are both PBC fighters. They're both managed slash advised by Al Heyman. They're both in the same weight class. They both have belts. There's no reason, no reason possible for these guys not to fight each other. None whatsoever. You have Sean Porter versus Earl Spencer, Sean Porter unifying this upcoming weekend. You've had um, unifications in the past with Jared Hurd and Arislandi Laura. I mean, the list goes on and on of tough fights the PBC has put on. But for some reason, when it comes to Leo Santa Cruz, it never happens. And if I'm Gary Russell, I'm taking this shit personal. I'm taking this as we're in the same weight class, both of us are champions, and in the sport of boxing, especially when you come, when you're taking it a step above just defending your title, in order to unify, you need to fight a champion. And we all know it's extremely difficult now in boxing to, um, to make fights when you're not under the same promotional banner or you're not on the same network. Well, this is not the case for Gary Russell Jr. and Leo Santa Cruz. So I'll take it, I'll take it personally, and I'll take it as disrespect from Gary Russell that this man is keeping me from building my legacy. This man is keeping me from um, making money for who I can provide for my family. So, with that being the case, Gary Russell, as a man, he's doing what he has to do to make the fight happen. He's doing what he has to do to put himself in a position. See, a lot of people like to criticize Gary Russell and say, well, Gary only likes to fight once a year. I look at it like this. Gary Russell has been put out there before that Gary Russell has hand injuries. So, my thing is, why fight, why continue to fight a bunch of lower caliber guys and waste create those opportunities away um, for fighting champions. It mean, for real, it's really that simple. Um, so basically, this past weekend, Gary Russell, he pulled up on Leo Santa Cruz's dad, and he put his arm around him, and he let him know. He talked to the camera. He told him, he told Leo Santa Cruz to stop deafening him. You see, he got his dad right here. He can reach out and touch him. He's already touching him right now. If somebody rolled up on my daddy like that, hey, man, I'm going to have to come see this guy. Now, to put even more drama into the situation, if you're unaware, like, Lil Santa Cruz's dad, to my understanding, he had um, cancer in the past, and my understanding now that his cancer is in remission. So it's not just like, oh, a, a young guy and an old guy. It's a, a young guy that's a professional fighter and an old guy that's been severely ill for um, within these last few years of his life. So, Lil Santa Cruz should take this very personally. Lil Santa Cruz should take this as the highest level of disrespect. Um, and Lil Santa Cruz should definitely speak out on it and make the fight. Now, some people would say like it was distasteful, but I look at it like a lot of people now, and this isn't to the people that have been speaking on the whole Gary Russell, Lil Santa Cruz situation prior to this. But this is to all of those silent folks. 
Where were you when Gary Russell Jr. was calling out Lil Santa Cruz and Lil Santa Cruz was ducking him? He didn't want to say his name, or when he did say his name, it didn't. It wasn't serious. It wasn't no action followed behind it. See, now at this point, no one can say that um, Gary Russell isn't serious. No man does this type, make this type of move without expecting some level of repercussion. Now, since these two guys are professional fighters and the repercussions that uh, Gary Russell can receive from Lil Santa Cruz can happen in the ring where both of these guys make some money, I mean, that's the best place for it to go down. That's the only place for it to go down. So Lil Santa Cruz, the challenge has been sent to you. I mean, it can't get any more clear that Gary Russell Jr. wants all the smoke in the world, and I'm here for it. Like, I don't think it's distasteful. I think the most distasteful thing to, um, I think the most distasteful thing is Lil Santa Cruz and his ducking. And we know how Lil Santa Cruz moves. This isn't the first time it happened at 122 with Guillermo Rigondeaux, and it's happening now with Gary Russell Jr. But the difference is, Gary Russell Jr. is built differently than Guillermo Rigondeaux. That's a huge difference. So with that being said, if I'm Guillermo Rigondeau, I'm taking this as a lesson. I'm taking the page out of Gary Russell Jr.'s book and I'm using it to my benefit. Now, some people may say, oh, Guillermo Rigondeau don't go out here trying to steal Gary Russell's style. But last time I checked, Gary, I mean, Guillermo Rigondeau was the number one guy. He was the first guy in this situation. He was the first guy that was blatantly ducked by multiple guys and moved up to 26. Ultimately to the point where Guillermo Rigondeau faced Lomachenko. And you know what? Gary Russell Jr. and Guillermo Rigondeau both have a have um, something in common. They both lost to Loma. But unlike, um, well, damn, now both of these guys are on PBC. So I'm not going to be the one to say, oh, yeah, they should fight each other. Absolutely not. If I'm Guillermo Rigondeau, I'm putting pressure on I'm putting pressure on Leo Santa Cruz right now. I mean, which one of us you going to fight? Because I... I wouldn't feel bad if uh, Lil Santa Cruz decided to fight Rigondeaux because he was there first, but at the same time, he needs to fight uh, Gary Russell as well. So if I'm Gary Russell and I'm Guillermo Rigondeaux, mainly if I'm Guillermo, for Guillermo Rigondeaux, I'm taking a page out of Gary Russell's book and I'm putting Lil Santa Cruz on notice and that's exactly what happened this weekend. For people to take, that took this whole situation literally, it wasn't meant to be taken as, oh, yeah, I'll fuck your daddy up because you're not going to fight me because that gets him, that gets the man nowhere. But he was implying that he has the ability to reach out and touch his daddy and the fact that he doesn't have the ability to reach out and touch you because you're ducking him, that's a problem. And since I put this narrative out there that this is something that I'm capable of doing, just based off of me speaking the fact that I'm capable of doing it and I physically have my arm around him, that should be enough disrespect for you to come and want to see me. But we'll see how this plays out. Hopefully, Leo Santa Cruz decide to um, step up, respond to it, but not just respond to it with words, respond to it with action. Have that contract put in place, set the fight date, and make the fight. All this talk about, oh, Leo Santa Cruz not ducking this person, and he not ducking that person. Oh, Leo was planning on fighting Javante Davis. Well, jump, uh, Tank moved up to 135 for a reason. It seemed like when it comes to all these extremely tough fights surrounding Leo Santa Cruz, it's always talk. It never happened. And it's not major action on Leo Santa Cruz's part. I don't see anything from Leo Santa Cruz saying that he wants these extremely tough fights. So, guys, the only thing I can do is we'll wait and see. But my hat goes off to Gary Russell Jr. I, I don't have a problem with what he did whatsoever. All I can say is I recall events with Keith Thurman when Keith Thurman was, um, when the fight with Keith Thurman and Earl Spence was being talked about on a daily basis. Um, and the masses of people that were having an issue with Keith Thurman, the narrative was simple. It was saying Keith Thurman isn't talking like a champion. He's not making it known that he wants this fight and that's an issue. Well, that's exactly what Gary Russell Jr. is doing. So, hey, man, shout out to my fellow DMV brother, Gary Russell Jr. And Leo Santa Cruz, stop the ducking, make the fight. It's Nino Brown Boxing. Shout out to the LDBC, and I'm out.